ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Scottish Syndrome TV podcast. I am now a assistant manager. I've been promoted. Woohoo! I am Woo-hoo. Ben Gilman. Hello. Hope you are well. Yes, you may clap. Tara Coe is now my favorite person in the world. As always, this is the finest TV podcast in the world. It says, I, hello. You should definitely put your TV listens in with us. Troy Salmon has picked his shit up recently. It's not too bad. Oh, I am always joined by the Queen of Scots, Helen Carnes. That's me. Hiya. The Titanator, Tara Chloe. Well, I'm not the Titanator. <laughs> and the average bastard known as Troy Salmon. <laughs> the what? Am I back now? The bastard? What is the this? The average bastard. Am I back? Am I back? At this point. You're from up north. <laughs> bastard pack. <laughs> so, rest I did it. I'm not, I'm not sorry. Scumbag. Scumbag. Uh, well. You all have to call me, except for Helen, you all have to call me sir now. No, I'm sir, joking. No, I'll never call you sir. Be that guy. No, I'm joking. I'll never call you sir. Ever. Got promoted today, so. You did indeed. Well done. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Well done. Happy. You're, on, you're, on, you're on my level now. DTL, assistant manager. Hey, you're on my level now. Ben. The tower is quite high up as well, so I've now drawn all now. three of you inside of the winner's circle of hard work. <laughs> yes. Right here. Getting to the uh, top of the Ben, I, I taught you well. I taught you well, Ben. I taught you well. Yeah, man. So fuck you, H Rose, Captain Junction. Have fun with that. Anyway, so fire. No, there are some managers in here who are things up, but the rest of you can just fire. So tell me, okay, you got titty photos in the post. Talk to me. Yes, yeah. My pool actually came from Saitama and it's full of porn. Let's see this. It's a titty part. Okay, this and- isn't a video podcast. Troy would have to censor it. Troy looks very eager, by the way. He's oh, yeah, yeah. forward. I'm, I'm just, it. Hey, I'm just on he's, a, he's, he's an average bisexual bastard. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> And I'm not going to open it now because I'm going to do an That's unboxing awful. video That's and stop my reaction. Yeah. If you're it not. Must be like Christmas Day for you, but for tits. Yeah, it's actually, uh, very Titmus. Yeah, it's an exclu- explicit one hole photo book. I sent the description to some of my friends, and they're like, Oh my god, Tara, I cannot read this out loud. Because you know why? Let me read the description for you. Hold on. Welcome to episode 103, Mary Titmus, Tara Chloe. You've just named this episode. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, yeah, let me just read the description. Hold on, let me look for it. Okay, we're not talking about uh, Bill Wonho, in Wonho's first photo book, the famously buff K-pop idol shows off his muscular body in bathrobe, shower scenes, and other sexy shots in the A4 size 140-page photo book. Uh-huh. Interview with Wonho is also included in the book. And let me read one of the seller's warning. Does he have his clothes on when he's talking in the interview, or is he naked? I... Like he could be naked like Gaga. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's basically the K-pop version of the Hollyoaks calendar, then. Is this what you're telling me? Yeah, basically, yes. yes. Yeah. It's basically that. Okay. So, so, so I understand that now. And this is the seller's warning. That's great. Hope it delivers in time for your birthday. So you can open it and really enjoy it. I should give you a warning. Ha, ha, ha. Open it when you're alone in the room only because you will keep, <gasps> you know, the screen portrait. The face. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Home alone for people that yeah, can't Yeah, emoji. See. Yeah, when you flip each page every time. Well, yeah. Chris Culkin, you, uh, he's copied the screen painting. What a thieving bastard. Macaulay Culkin is a thieving bastard. Should also be the name of this podcast as well. And for those of you who don't know what the Hollyoaks calendar is, Hollyoaks is a British television soap where most of the cast are cast for their looks and not their acting skills. So mm-hmm. it's a very famously wooden soap, but um, they have a calendar every year where the very young and nubile cast takes their clothes off. So Okay. Mm-hmm. And there's a girls' one and a boys' one. So. It's called 
hangover television on Sunday morning because everybody yeah. watched it when they were pissed, when they were at their brains hungover, didn't know what day of the week they were on, and he didn't have work. Everyone whacked on Hollyoaks, except for me, because I was playing on my PlayStation because I was a cool kid. So, like, <laughs> what I've been told, it's turn your brain off television when you're hungover. You can't really think. Yeah. Much, so. mm-hmm. Pretty people. Pretty people having problems. I mean, it's 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 supposed to be set in a small village in Chester. They've had three serial killers already. You know, mm. it's not a place that I would ever move to. A lot of them, a lot of killers. Just as you can learn. Sorry. Anyway, so are you excited? For what? Are you, go- are you going to rate the titties out of 10? Every picture that you get in it, like, you foie. <laughs> You're going to try and eat the paper. If it's delicious, they're going to be like, Ow. You're going to lick no. the paper. You're going to lick the pictures. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not going to. No. We're we're pimping your YouTube channel right now. I need to I need to hype up your video. I'm trying to be your hype man. Okay, okay. Well, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but I'm just gonna be like you know the screen portrait throughout the book. I yeah. did. I do enjoy Tara's TikToks when she's reacting to things. They're very good. Especially oh, when you have a fan. When Euphoria. you when you when you're acting reacting to Euphoria. Oh, yeah. With your bubble tea, it was excellent. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a great deal. Well, yeah, because I do know a Cassie in real life, actually. Ah, uh, so, yeah. I think we all do. We all do, yeah. Definitely. But yeah, it's um, it's some excellent eye acting. I am very, very impressed. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Euphoria, bro. So we tried to talk about Euphoria last week, but you were like, oh, I haven't watched it yet. Have you watched it yet, Troy? Um, yeah, I've literally almost caught up. Almost caught up. Yeah, almost caught up. Yeah, you can swear you can spoil it for me. That's fine. I'm, I'm good. Can I, can I just interrupt here? The Troy Salmon trope now is, have you watched it, Troy? First it was Lucifer, now it's your, your, your Euphoria. Oh, Euphoria. Oh, 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 Euphoria Seriously. is like a... A fine wine, it's just like you've got to, you've got to do it. Take your time. This is becoming yeah. a catchphrase. Have you seen it, Troy? This week, this is this is becoming a running <laughs> joke now. No, this week, uh, I watched the, 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 the Rue special was incredible. Oh my mm. gosh, Ellen, that, Rue, so that Rue one, yeah. Went back and watched the Rue one, I was like, oh my goodness. But we her and Ali sitting in the, the diner. Oh my god, that was amazing. But promise me, promise me when you watch the last episode, you'll let yeah. us know when you've watched it because oh, you will. You will need to, you will need to talk. You'll need to talk. You'll need some therapy. Oh, wait, let me... yes, Helen says she talks, Helen. Come in, Helen. Don't worry about this. Tara. He'll need some help. He'll need he'll need a he'll need a, uh, a kind word, I think. Yeah, I think I will after that. Yeah. Well, what, what I've heard. Oh. But yeah. I need it. But what I'm going to say is that what happens in the end, apparently, what happens in the last episode, the clues are are there throughout the whole series. So. Oh no! Oh no! Mm-hmm. Scare me! Scare me! Oh, okay, no. so I'm going to quickly do some TV news. Go on. Tor- Boy is back. I've never seen it, but I know it's a big show. Uh, people are excited. Um, really do need to watch the first season on well, Netflix now. I've taken it from Channel 4, so all the things are there. I need to start watching season one. Top Boy, any good? I've never Boy. seen it. Boy's a couple episodes and literally, yeah. I haven't finished off. Really really finished the main off. actor is fantastic, he's a great actor. Well, what I saw was really good, to be honest. So, good to show. Solid. So, if you're having to watch the back and you watch it, you like. Yo, it's, good. it's addictive. That's what I'll say on that. It's addictive. But as well as watching so many shows at the time, like we should have even more addictive than that. But yeah, it's a good show. Really good show. Okay. So that's all I have because there's nothing but soap news this week. And I don't really want to get into it. Oh, soap news. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. So who wants to go first? Actually, you know what? I mean, who wants to go first? Seriously. Go no, first. you just, what were you going to say? Hey, what did you say? Oh, thanks for putting me on the spot. Right, so... Um, oh, no, you're not putting you on the spot. You just went, oh, actually... Exactly, you're the one who did it. And then you were like, no, 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 no. Exactly, I thought, what are you Sometimes doing? my brain goes before my mouth, and that, that is... That's, that's, ben, 
Very ben cool. screwed Ben. Do it. I screwed myself. You did. Well, that's the, I clone myself and I take myself to bed every night. My wife has to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. That is one of those knock out the park moments. So anyway, we're gonna keep going. I'm sure one day there will be like a fan that can quote every funny thing I've ever said. That is all. <laughs> Come oh, so God. I could stick it in my ass. Brilliant. All anyway, right, so I want to. I'm just gonna talk about the uh, toys that made us on Netflix. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm just gonna go through the toys because basically you can understand what the show is about. It's basically talking about um, the development of famous toy brands in the world, basically. So um, what can you think of, Troy? Like, for example, what, what, what would you like to take a guess what would appear on this show? Oh, uh, so they do four episodes a season. They get the people behind the toys to talk about it and collectors. Um, I, find, I love it because it explains the whole history and the dips and the rises. So Star yeah. Wars... Yeah, it's going to be on there anyway. Star Wars. I don't like Star Wars, but I can understand. Um, Barbie. Okay. Yes. Yep. Well, obviously. Yeah, that's got to be on there. Plastic bitch. Um, he Man. Oh, you. Oh, he man. Oh, <laughs> Tyler yeah. just woke up there. That was amazing. I never seen anything like that. Before. <laughs> I mean, like, He Man and Skeletor are totally a couple. He Man's got my Yes, but, but he and he's Skeletor terrible. just loved each other. They were just on the wrong side. I'm telling you right now. I was just more about She-Ra at the time. She's horrible, though. I, funny enough, I like She-Ra more. more I, I don't like. I don't like He-Man's hair. Just crap. It's the worst disguise ever, though, because it's like, well, who's He-Man? It's like Prince Adam and him looking very similar. <laughs> life yeah, but so yeah. does Gem and Adora and Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana, you know. People are just stupid. Miley Cyrus then licked her vagina at the music awards after that. I don't know. Like she's definitely not Helen Montana anymore. Uh, GI Joe. That's a. I'm going to be very honest here. We're English, so. Um, yeah, we had Action Man. Yeah, yes, GI Joe. Man. We yes. we're not too familiar with that one, but Star Trek. That was quite big. I can imagine. It reminds me of that Big Bang Theory episode where. Um, what is it? Um, Sheldon breaks the uh, teleporter. <laughs> the uh, transporter well, thing. Yeah. It's a really nice episode. He breaks Leonard's because he doesn't want to get his out of the box. That's a great episode. Um, Transformers, obviously, Lego, Hello Kitty. Uh, mm-hmm. Hello Kitty is awful, but then people seem to like it for some reason. It's not, it's like a. No, I don't get it. I'm not here for it. And my little pony can. Do one as well. The amount of adverts My Little Pony had is ridiculous. I know that's I'm, I'm oh, concerned oh. about the amount of hairy men that like My Little Pony now. Oh, well, I'm like, hey, hey Ben, you know what I'm talking You know, you know, you know. You know bronies, what I'm about. The Bro, ponies, that the ponies, whatever they call them. They argue about the best pony. It's like, no, this is for little girls, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm clarifying. When I was a kid, My Little Ponies, He Man, mm-hmm. it's down the middle. Why? Yeah, I this think the... I think I'm a little bit older than all of you, and I remember the original My Little Pony, and I had a couple of them. Did they I... have attitude? They no. were all very snarky bitches now, though. My Little Pony. No, they didn't. They were just all very helpful and nice when I was a child. Like they it's weren't. Just snarky little fuckers. Or, 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 or hipsters like My Little Pony now. Or hipsters now. Yeah, just... the original ones were just like into horsey shit. Like they weren't. Weird sex things for middle aged men. Mean. There is grown men that want to see them fuck. It's wrong. It's a children's franchise. Oh my gosh. No, I'm it's, serious. It's true I'm though, yeah. He's not, he's not, li- he's not it's lying, weirdo, sorry. He's a, oh my gosh. I've, I've. It's like, a, it's like a halfway house for furries, isn't it? Oh yeah. Those people have problems. Be scared, school girl ever comes to the MCU. Um, anyway, so I've lost my I've lost my train of thought now. Oh, God. You're talking okay. about the toys that made us. Uh, Teenage Mutant uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles. The, the, they were massive when I was a kid. Hero <laughs> turtles, actually. You're British. They're hero turtles. Teenage Mutant. Oh, I knew. Man, I was gonna say that. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> hero turtles. Oh, they weren't. I, watched, teenage, I loved they films. weren't. 
Teenage Mutant Tur- Ninja Turtles in the UK. They were Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. They're ninjas to me, so it's Ninja Turtles. This is like the next fight off the last I'm sorry. <laughs> Ninja turtles. <laughs> I need to correct Helen. Maybe in Scotland they call them heroes, but here in England, we no. call them ninjas. It was all over the when they first showed it in the UK. BBC <laughs> were worried that ninja might make children violent, so they changed it to Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Well, mm. it's still Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like the film says. So I'm yeah. going with that. The, the film was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but when they showed the the cartoon in the UK, it was Hero. I hated the cartoon. I loved the film, so that's why I go with Ninja Turtles. Oh, well, that's why you go with Ninja. Yeah, okay. that's my thinking. Um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Jesus Christ, when that came out. That was yes, a great episode to me. Oh, I love that episode. Jesus Christ. I mean, you couldn't move for Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Yeah. I was at the right age. I was like, I was a bit older, but nine. I was into it for like a year. Jesus Christ, everyone loved Power Rangers. It was like the coolest fucking thing you've ever seen. I think I'm a bit old for Power Rangers. I'm a bit older than the rest of you. But they saved so much money. You find out how, like, they took all the Japanese fight scenes and went, right, so that's the Power Rangers thing. So we've saved 50% of the episode. Let's have the American actors fight in America. And, yeah, we've got a show. Brilliant. Lovely. That was so smart smart. about the That was so smart. smart. Yeah. Well, it's, it's got one of the writers on it. And they go, so we would have the random ice cream months and we would have to think of how to make an episode about that creature. We would have to base the American episode around whatever creature they had. That makes me laugh hard. That must well, be really impossible. The thing that surprised me about that toy show was that He-Man, the cartoon, was written to sell the toys, not the other way around. Oh, snap. So it wasn't like they had this He-Man show and then they decided they were going to make loads of toys out of it. They were like, how are we going to sell toys? But Batman Forever did the same thing. Like, I've watched a video recently where it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to make loads of things that you can sell as toys. Bat credit card, loads of bat costumes. It's not the first time I've heard that they've made something to sell merchandise. There's a famous series in Japan called Gundam. Oh, yeah. 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 So they will... Print suits first and put a story around it, and um, that it's just to sell the toys. Mm, Gundam series is huge over there, that's for sure. Gundam's not so big over here now, it was massive when I was growing up, like, yeah, gr- yeah, grand. You had the Gundam Wing series, all that stuff. Even when I was uh, talking no. five years ago, Gundam was big. Nobody does the bloody suits now, like the little <laughs> robot, it was, it, yeah, because two literally that was the face of two at one point. Gundam was the face of the, every advert that was Gundam everywhere. It was all over satellite television. It was on the uh, Toonami channel. Yeah, it was everywhere. It was um, when we got free yeah. anime. It was lovely. And professional wrestling, so wrestling, WCW, WWE. Yeah. One of those crappy ones that I didn't get because I wasn't into wrestling until I was 16 because I was a weird child. I completely missed the childhood mm. wrestling because I was a prick. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> but I love the show because it's like a punchy 45-minute thing, but it goes for it really quickly. It explains the basics. Any changes in the in the um, the figurines, and it's basic. It's not. It doesn't spend too long, and everyone seems really positive and happy. And it's it's every episode feels different. Yeah. It's got cancelled now because it stopped going in 2019, which is a shame. But I love it. You should watch it. I I decided to take a different tack and talk about the toys because that's more interesting to listen to. You know what you're getting into. Go watch that. I finished the last one standing, the Japanese comedy. I finished it. I want you to know something. I wondered how did they could continue it. They basically changed up the comedians halfway through. Mm. So to keep it fresh, they decide, right, we're going to change up all the actors, all the comedians. We're going to put all the rookies away from the veterans. So it makes it more fairer. So the rookies are all having a laugh and doing their bit. And um, they have a final scene where they all come together. And um, can I just big it, big that up because it keeps it fresh? Our epi- eight episodes, you don't get the same comedians yeah. until the end. Changes it up, really funny. They made a plot line up where to 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 understand why forty year old comedians with big beards are pretending to be high school students, and it's not weird. They keep insisting they're seventeen. There was a time loop. Where they kept ages for the time loop. 
Oh my god. <laughs> it's really funny to me because it, it goes because they can't remember. And then they have to improvise some funny shit that they tell their their young self so that they can break the code in. And then you find out that the host is the one behind it, and he's like, Huh? And it's great because they've set him up and he's gone, This bastard's behind it. And he's like, Nanny? Donnie? Nanny Solene. Huh? Like, am I the one? Really? Me? It's really <laughs> funny. Like, it's slapstick. It looks cheap. Am I funny? Funny. And they all improvise. You're a bastard. I'm going to slap you when I come backstage. And all that type of stuff. So go watch <laughs> that. That's really funny. Yeah. Really happy with that. Eight episodes, but they found a way to keep it um, going. I watched the end of Glow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not happy. It's I more... Wanna... I don't know, man. The wrestling kind of goes right in the background in season three, man. It's, mm. it's shit. Season three, it goes not good. I, I it's don't all, all drama stuff. Yeah, yeah but it's... balance right in season one and two. Have your drama, but put the wrestling in. Otherwise, it's just... I don't know. Season two was the perfect season. It was amazing. They really leaned into it. Yeah. And then um, they did the cardinal sin of... I think they tried to set up not have too much to set up for season four in case it didn't come back but they yeah. left it on a massive cliffhanger you should kind of leave the cliffhanger in the middle of your wrap up so that it's not a, the last thing you remember I think they were I think they were setting up a two season arc there and then they realised at the end that they had a one season arc yeah and the problem is I don't like the the uh, I'm gonna call it an a, 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 um, excuse. Ah, oh, COVID. Fucking get on with season four, you bastards, you lazy average bastards like Troy. Like, yeah, come on, that's lazy shit right there. I mean, what? Royal Mail goes. I was right, I could just see that Troy register in that. What's going what on? What the heck? I'm joking. <laughs> I'm trying to get your nickname to be average bastard. <laughs> no, I'm trying. No, he's anything, see. anything but average. Yeah, exactly. You're very good at your job. This is week Troy goes on on strike and doesn't do their podcast for us, so this is going to come out in a couple of weeks. Exactly. (laughs) There's going to be some days missing. No, but I just wanted to say I love Glow, but I just kind of feel like it lost its way in season three. I would have loved the fourth and fifth season. I don't see why COVID should stop the whole show. Delay it, but you can bring them back at some point in a delay point. It's a bit crap. It's, it's, it's It's an excuse. That's what it's an excuse. I think it's been think it's been... people they always highlighted it when a new season dropped, it was the big thing. It's been cancelled though, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's not mm-hmm. an excuse. They someone said it was COVID. I'm not having that. It can't be. I reckon it was less ratings. It had to be. Yeah, I think so. I think they told the story. I don't know why like Yeah. You know when... once they stop being underdogs, it stops being interesting, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, they should have left it at three seasons. It's, it's a magic number. Right, yeah. so I'm done. So I've finished all my stuff. Uh, I've got some stuff for next week to fin- to start. Yeah, I'm just wrapping all my shit up this year, this week. And um, <laughs> I make it sound like I'm wrapping up my poo. No, but like I'm wrapping it all up and it's done. So now I can talk about new shows next week. It's exactly. For it That's me. What about you guys? No. Okay, who's going next? Who wants to go next? I have to go next. You go next, Troy. Go on. All right. Okay, ben so. First. So, <laughs> just going to do a little uh, recapping like today. Not so much new. You have new, uh, new, new is coming. Uh, what are you going to say? What did you say? Europa League. Europa League. For ya. That one. Europa oh. League, Champions League thing. Oh, my gosh. EU. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so we hate teenagers, whatever they whatever you call this show, Europa. Well euphoria, you mean Oh Euphoria. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, I know we thought I know I've had a euphoria. long day of excitement. I just got <laughs> Sorry. He's excited. I, I guys. He's excited. Yeah, yeah. He's, like, he's excited, guys. He's excited. Oh, I'm excited, yeah, I'm excited for So uh yeah, Euphoria. As I said before, when um me and Helen were literally just speaking a little bit on it earlier on. The Rue episode. Oh my gosh. Incredible. 
in the it's, flipping the credible. It's some good telly, that, isn't it? Woo! That special, you know, that Christmas Eve special. The first one with Rue. Uh, I, I talked about um, Jules last time, but this Rue one, I literally just went back and I was like, let me just watch the special, the other special real quick. Um, when I was getting on season two. But this one right here, Ali just having a candid, no hold barred conversation with Rue, aka the guy, and I was like, oh my, the emotion in this as well, just talking about suicide, all that kind of thing, just like ending it, and she doesn't feel that she's going to be there very long, and he's just trying to keep her there, you know what I'm saying, just have some faith in something, you got to believe in something, you know, if you don't believe in God, you got to believe in something, something, you have to have a higher power, just something that governing everything that you do, or something you believe in, at least, something that you have to like, you know what I'm saying, you gravitate to, and Ali even brings up a point. Um, Col- um, Coleman Domingo, he's the guy who plays Ali, by the way. He's a guy, mm-hmm. this guy, amazing, amazing actor, by the way. If you haven't seen his stuff, just go back and watch his back catalogue. His stuff is really good. He's, he's, he's incredible. Um, but yeah, so he breaks down the room and just says, what will your mother and your sister, what, what will they think of you when you go? What are you going to leave? What's the mark you're going to leave? And stuff like that. And she just breaks down. That's the bit that got me the most. When he brought that up, I was like, oh, but that, that, that hit me. I was like, oh, my. Sometimes in life, you know, I thought about that a while back, and I was like, wow, you think to yourself, why are you even here sometimes? You know what I'm saying? You, you're annoying. Mm. You just yourself. In those moments when you're looking for a bit of meaning. Yeah, some inspiration or something, you know what I'm saying? Just to kind of keep you going. And you think to yourself, things are not going well for you, you know what I'm saying? You're down the dumps. You're, low, you're the lowest of the low, what you feel to yourself, you know? Uh, depression sets in, you know, that kind of thing. And you, and, and as you know, like, if, especially you know, uh, black culture, where you, you can't you think like that, it's, it's, that's it, it's game over, you're, you're done out here. Mm. It's not as talked about in the, the culture, you know, certain cultures, you know. So, um, obviously, people talk about it more nowadays, and uh, it's uh, more, as I said before, more talked about, but um, that hits me, man. I was like, that actually got to me, I was like, oh, snap, I was like, that actually hit me deep. You know, but um, don't get too don't get too emotional. Don't get too emotional, right? You know what I'm saying? But that uh, oh, uh, episode, man, that, that hit me, man. Especially even I even asked um, a woman who was working at the diner where they were sitting and having a conversation. She goes, "Hey, what about you? How long have you been? Um, you know, what I'm saying um, being a soul boy, you haven't taken any drugs." She goes, what "Was it? How much you say she was? Oh, Thirteen years? How much was it, Helen? I can't remember. Something like that. I can't remember, but it was quite a long. About Forty or ten years, something like that. It's been a long time." And uh, <laughs> she goes, she couldn't have a relationship while she was focusing on getting clean. Mm. That kind of thing. Because um, she, she likes Rue and she keeps Rue around to kind of, um, you know, so keep, she feels that Cliff Jules is the, her balance. And she yeah. kind of blames her at the same time because she feels that she's enabling her at the same time as well. So you've got that kind of um, that economy going on. And <laughs> Ali's just saying, hey, focus on you. No oh, man, anybody else but you. And you even see like a little scene where he goes outside to take a little break to have a little smoke. And he brings his um his kids up because yeah. his life is taking a turn as well. Because he doesn't want to see her go down the same road that he went down. The family hates you. You do something, you might you hit someone, you might threaten someone, and you can't go back. You know what I'm saying? Then you get to a certain age and then the time goes by. It's harder and harder to say sorry, you know what I'm saying? And you, you just forget about it, and then part, time is gone. That's it. Can't, we can't really get those years back. Um, so, yeah, so stuff like that, man. And uh, I love this episode. This episode is incredible. This is probably my favorite story episode so far right now, to be honest. So, so far. And, and it's except so far, because Helen is literally like, he's hung over this season. Helen is, everyone, everyone is you right season now. Two. Yeah? Helen is what, sorry? Is taunting you if I'm not. No, I'm she, not. <laughs> no. She, she's saying something big is going to go down, so I'm, I'm getting prepared right now. So Tara like, knows what I'm talking about. Tara, Tara knows as well. Tara's saying, quiet. Just like, I need to get on this show because I'm the only one out of the four of us. Ben, get That's on it, man. Right on. Get on it. Especially if you're like, you know what I'm saying, and the social work, you know, anyone's into that kind of thing as well, which is mm. a really good show to watch as well. So let's just bring that appeal as well. You see this crowd, people, the way they act and certain stuff, certain um, um, stuff that they're doing. Um, and certain stuff they have to deal with, and you think to yourself, oh my god, oh my god, 
Just show this. Toxic man, love it. I don't know why he says stuff happened in the show. And it's like you feel so bad liking the show. You're like, why am I why do I like this stuff? What is what am I doing here? What is going on? And I said before, this every time I watch the show, it's just like, why is the show so good? I'm like, I'm trying to see, this is what happens to me. Every time I watch the show episodes, I'm like this. I'm watching them like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're I'm so not sure. I'm not sure if enjoying this is the word, but I'm I definitely experiencing this. Experiencing, yes. That's a that's a good word, right there. Yeah, experience. It's an experience. That's what it is. Every episode, it's, a, it's an entire adventure. It's a journey right now into the abyss. Yeah, it's the literally. Other side. Yeah. You know, that's what it is. In this point, you're in the void. Um, but yeah. Um. Yeah, that's uh, the first, uh, well, that's my first pick in that one. Um, sure. Euphoria, just a little uh, wrap up on that one so far. Season two's coming, don't worry. I'm You're also gonna... wrapping your shit up and throwing it out the car window. It's season like... two, season two is coming home. <laughs> don't worry, people, season two. My, yeah, mate, uh, me and Helen and Tara, we're going to talk about this. Season two is coming. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. This weekend, it's getting finished. Okay. It's up to, well, I'm going to be up to date. That's what I'm gonna say. Next week we want to hear the finale. Your four. Yeah, there we go. So yes. So uh, yeah, you four. Yeah, that's that's my little uh, thing right there. Um, but yeah, and uh, what else we gonna talk about right now? So I've been watching. Um, I've been binging the Last Kingdom. So I'm gonna wrap up this little bit as well. The it Last Kingdom is so damn good. It's got cancer. Well, I had like a. I think it's finished that it was the final season. I think it stopped there. It's finishing off properly. Finished. Oh, good, good, good. It's finished, good, good, good. it's finished. It's finished. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I'm on like end of season three now. That's where I am. So there's like five seasons overall. And I was like, oh, because there's going to be a fifth and final season. But I was like, oh my gosh. This show is too good. I don't think this show will be anywhere near Vikings, yo. Obviously, it's on that level, but it's just on that level underneath. But it's still so good. Uh, Last um, Kingdom is right now. Uhtred. The, the Ragnar of this uh, series, the Saxon turned Dane as he was brought up the way he was. And uh, he's, he's, at this point, he's got many wives at this point. Many wives have come, wives have died at this point. And, he's, and this season three right now, there's a witch who's trying to bewitch him and try to make her his, his, his queen, you know, at this point. And he's, apparently he's got a curse on him. At this point, he's cursed. Uh, people around him are dying. Um, his kids are that was elsewhere, they're somewhere else. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this show is getting so good right now. Alfred, Alfred the King is, is old and frail at this point. He's dying, and he's trying to get his, his son to take over, um, Edward. And uh whoo, stuff is going down. Stuff is going down. So um, anyone seen the last kingdom right now? It's the show is really good. Season three is solid right now, okay. and yes, anyone seen the last kingdom? Get on it right now. So if you like Vikings, get on it. Last kingdom, so check it out. So that's my two little uh catch up picks right there. Uh, oh, la, la. all done, all done. There you go, it's pretty wrapped up. Who's next? What's up? Right, who wants to wrap their shit out and throw it at the car window next, ladies? <sighs> Tara, I will leave it up to you. If you want to go next, that's fine. But um, I can if you. What do you want to do? You're on mute though, so. Well, I didn't realize it's on mute. Anyway, yeah. So I'm actually going to talk about um the Korean series called Hometown. It's actually based off the cult. So, um, okay, has anyone heard of the Om Shin, Shinrikyo cult? Yeah. Yes, it's loosely based off this, actually. So, the Om Shinrikyo cult actually has a uh, smelly man who never showers, and he has a cult group. I don't know why people even worship him and, you know, lick his hair or whatever shit. So, okay. So, this show actually, um, yeah, so, but it's actually, it actually takes place in a fictional town called Saju, somewhere in the southern, one of the southwest, southeastern provinces of uh, Korea. That's why their dialect is so different compared to the Seoul dialect that I'm usually used to. So, uh, in this show, um, there's this guy, his name is called uh, Kyung Ho. He actually goes to Japan to study, and there he joins the cult. 
and he gets influenced by them. And I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the sarin gas attack, right? On one of the train stations in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he actually, yeah, the Tokyo subway sarin attack. So Kim Ho actually got, um, you know, um, like, you know, inspired by the cult, and he carried out the, a sarin gas attack, uh, you know, at his hometown in Saju in the train station. Yeah, he carried it out himself with his cult members to test the effect. So that's what happens in the story. But I believe the timeline is actually slightly different from, you know, the original attack. The, the original attack was in 1995, but in this story, it's in 1989. Yeah. So uh, we fast forward to 1999. And this detective, who's called uh, Cha Hyun In, basically he, his wife was a victim in the terrorist attack. So uh, his wife's death still haunt him, and he actually has been, you know, um, investigating a series of murders that leads to the terrorist attack. But a late, but then you know, this story actually mainly features around uh, Kim Ho's family. And he has a sister called Jung Hyun, and her life is actually hell because she's been labeled as, you know, a uh, a family member of a terrorist. So initially, actually, her niece disappears, right? Because her stupid terrorist brother is in jail. And mm -hmm. God knows how he still influences the people and the interviewers who interview him in jail about his story. This guy is really a fucker, seriously. And remember the detective, like, Kyung In? He actually slept with his wife and brought her to Japan. Uh -huh. And they had a baby together, which is actually, you know, the niece that goes missing in the story. And I can understand why the detective gets so fucking mad. Because like, bro, yeah. what the fuck, man? This guy is really a piece of shit, you know? One thing I really hate about cult leaders is how fucking influential they are, even though they are a piece of shit. Like, yeah, you bluff people, you can levitate, you got superpowers. Like, bro, who's going to believe you? If you can give me a million dollars, right? And clear my credit card debt, then I'll fucking believe you. But you don't have yeah. the money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the queen of the world. Okay. Yes, yeah. So the story is actually like pretty dark. And mm. I also have to highlight the series actually begins with an Asian version of La Llorona. Oh. What? Yeah. So in this scene, actually, there's this girl and her mom. And the little girl says to her mom, Can you not fill the bathtub with water? The lady will come out again. Like La Llorona, who usually emerges from the bathtub because she's a pervert. I don't know why it's always when people are bathing. I think she's a pervert. Yeah. So this little kid girl goes to the bathroom and gets captured by Asian, by Korean La Yorona. And so there's the mom. So I'm um, actually, I haven't watched until the end. I have three episodes left, but I'm still trying to figure out what's the connection of this, for this Asian La Yorona with the cult. Because apparently there's also a mixtape uh, feature. Like whenever they play this stupid mixtape, and then the lady, the La Llorona, appears. And whoever sees her are uh, eligible to join the cult, something like that. Yeah, and to be frank, I, I don't know what's the connection with the cult, but I'm still trying to, you know, find out. And also, you know, like, people have seen that mixtape, right? You know, uh, it's actually just a compilation of, you know, the opening credit scenes, like dead reindeers, flies, and random shit. It's kind of like a curse from Ju on or something, people who see that actually end up going crazy and end up joining the cult for some reason. Yeah, so I'm actually trying to figure out like, you know, what's the link with the La Llorona, the take and the cult. But then again, I haven't watched until the end. So I I don't really know much about it. Yeah. So is it so has it got that like, supernatural elements to it, the show? Yeah. yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Is it gory? Because it's a Korean show. I'm guessing it's a bit. Because I, I love stuff like that. So I'm good. Not... Well, Korean shows haven't held back recently. You know what I mean? So I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah, I was making sure. I exactly. love, I love it when they blend real life stuff with supernatural stuff. Yeah, I, I love that stuff as well. I love that. Like yeah. magical, magical yeah. realism shit. Love it. Yeah. Love it. I'll eat yeah. that up. You know so, those documentary type type stuff with it. I love that stuff. I love so it. Tara, is this like a Netflix original? Is this another Korean slam dunk? I'm not sure actually, but it's on Netflix. <laughs> okay, but is it another good one in the hot run that Korea has had recently? Because they're on fire. Yeah. Right now. 
good. And the soundtrack. It's a sleep game. They've been well. ripping it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Bound. Hmm. And cool. also, cool. yeah, the story just revolves around Jung Kyun, which is uh, Kyung Ho's sister. She's just picking up, she's just, you know, living her shitty life, being labeled as a terrorist family member and trying to clean up everything that her brother did. But you know what's the fucked up part? Like when she was in school, in high school, I mean, the brother was already of an older age and he went to Japan with the detective's wife. Oh my goodness, right? What the fuck? Yeah, the detective wanted to punch him. I can understand <laughs> why. Yeah. So he went with the detective's wife to Japan and they mated. And yeah, then the niece was born. But at first, they didn't know who the niece mother was until they figured out. Yeah, so when uh, the niece so, sorry, what's her name again? Uh, uh, Junyun was in high school. Her brother was actually, you know, like, uh, working to influence her group of friends to join his cult. So this show, in a way, is pretty scary. Like, you know, in this small town, your, your brother is a cult member. He's the villain. And you don't know, like, who is part of the cult and basically, you know, who you can trust. Like, even your closest friend could backstab you to be, you know, part of the cult. Mm. Yeah, you get what I mean, right? Even the police could be working with the cult. Your best friend could be a secret cult member. And there's a lot of secret cult members that keep emerging. And it's pretty scary, like, you know, uh, who you can trust. But honestly, if I were her, I would just get the fuck out of that town. So her niece, yeah, which is actually the terrorist daughter, which was bred with the detective's wife, gets kidnapped. Yeah, and the main character looks for her. But she actually gets kidnapped to be the successor of the cult because she's the daughter of Yeah. Wow. Okay. Sounds intriguing. Does okay. sound intriguing. I am intrigued. Uh, yeah, yeah but uh, seriously, if I was Jung Hyun, I'll just get the fuck out of that town like really long ago with the her with my mom. Her mom is also there. The mom and the niece. Just get the fuck out of that shitty. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Yeah, I do feel sorry. Yeah, I do feel sorry for the detective Hyung Mi Choi Hyung In, cause his wife never really loved him, but loved the. I don't know if she was influenced to love the cult leader and breed with him or, or what, but it's just fucked up, man. Sometimes with cult leaders, though, people get brainwashed into. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, but there are a lot of cults in South Korea and Japan apparently, and a lot of them like you know target foreigners sometimes scam money and it's a lot of this kind of cost but I'm not a religious person so I tell them to fuck off I'm not religious or spiritual so I just tell them to fuck off if they come to me with flyers I know that like, Om Shinriko was like really a lot of people died didn't they if I remember correctly if I'm getting the right one yes and the person who started it looks like a fucking hobo well they always do I don't know right they yeah. always do as they look. But I did have someone trying to get me to join a cult. Have you guys heard of Happy Signs? Yes. Yeah, because I, I knew this like Taiwanese American girl and she kept promoting Happy Signs to me. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is that? And she's like, you should try it. You should be more spiritual and blah, blah, blah. Because at the time I just started my career, right? So I was like, just meditating too and like, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and then the stupid girl was like, You should try it, you should try meditation with this. Then I'm like, Happy Science, I'm like, Yo, what the fuck is that? The name is stupid. Why are you promoting this shit to me, yo? And then I found out it's a cult group, so I'm like, Okay, luckily I'm not so spiritual or swayed by you know, nonsense like tarot or fortune telling or the how do you say those? I don't know, celestial or what. I'm not swayed by this kind of thing. Oh, horoscopes, we call them. Yeah, or celestial or ethereal, like another universe. I'm really not swayed by this kind of thing, seriously. So, I mean, if someone, it happened before, you know, like people come to me, it's flyers, and I'm like, fuck off, dude. I'm a, even if they claim to be from a church or something like that, but like, oh, like, you know, those church cults, they, yeah, apparently they have those in Korea as well. So, people come to me with that, I'd be like, yo, I'm Satanist, get lost. Mm. Yeah. Cool. It. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um. No, actually, I'm. I'm not really saying this. I'm just saying it to make them pissed off. So yeah. Actually, the church. Uh, some of Satanist tenets 
it's not about evil, it's about like anti kind of religion using I think they're anti religion having power over people's bodies, like they're very much about people owning their own bodies and their right to that and stuff, which yeah, I think a lot of people hear Satanists and they go, Oh, but actually it's not about worshipping the devil. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. But, um, mm-hmm. The one that tends to make people go away the quickest is if you tell them that they're Catholic, you're a Catholic, because even the most ardent of Jehovah's Witness or whoever it is on your doorstep will know not to even try and persuade a Catholic not to be a Catholic anymore. Because if you say you're anything else, they think you can, they can still persuade you a little bit, but um, Catholic is one they go, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, right. But, yeah, and all those people in the UK preaching about doing stay on the street. <laughs> Yeah, all those people preaching about doomsday, especially at Leicester Square, and I'm like, Yo, oh, yeah, there's always somebody in Leicester Square, yeah, and he looks like a hobo. That's true, yeah, like, shouting about well, there's now they're shouting about doomsday and masks, and how oh, and racism and Russia, and it's and a bit how COVID awful. is a lie, and it's a, it's a right. weapon of the state to control us. You know, right, yeah. So I was reading the Om Shikuro. It actually has, you know, uh, I'm actually looking at what its influence is, but this is actually pretty ridiculous. I mean, the aim of most cult leaders is to get laid, right? That's yes, mostly what that's they do. That's a joke that's been <laughs> to the ground, though, by movies and like, uh, I've, I, I do agree, but like, uh, like you can run a cult so much. You can run a cult without wanting to have sex with everyone. Like, if it was a true religion, you wouldn't want to have sex with every single woman in that church. Like, true. let's just grow up and admit what you want, which is just to get laid a lot. I'm going to say the offensive Ben thing of the week. If I was if I like Jesus Christ, I would expect everyone to sit with me. That, yeah. yeah. And there we go. It's out in the world. There we go. That's the... Uh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Jesus, Jesus Christ is a tall, dark, and handsome Middle Eastern man who wouldn't want to. Yeah, definitely, you know. Hey, we'll yeah, around, yeah. You if I was so, Jesus Christ, I would expect everyone to sit with me. I'd be offended if you didn't. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, I'm Shinrin Kyo. Belief system. I'm I just love the way Karen's okay, like, no, I've got no time. Like, hey, oh, made out of. Let's okay. move on. So it's made so-called, uh, uh, um, you know, those blender of Indian Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, yoga, Nostradamus, oh dear God, oh. <laughs> and he identified himself as Christ or the Lamb of God. Dude, not the heavy metal band Lamb of God, right? Stupid. That's Maybe a great band. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Jesus Christ, they're heavy. Lamb of God. Maybe he listens to heavy metal, so he knows about the band. I'm like, yeah, be Lamb of God, yo. Okay, yes. And uh, he says the Third World War will be instigated by the United States. Boo, that's Russia. That's Russia and China. <laughs> yep, okay. Yeah, and also, um, okay, this is so stupid. Like, the beast from the Book of Revelation attacking Japan, which is... The United States attacking Japan. Uh, okay, more like Russia is attacking Ukraine and Revelation. yeah, and China attacking the whole of Asia. Yep, and also um, so dark conspiracies everywhere promulgated by Jews, Freemasons, the Dutch, the British royal family, and rival Japanese religions such as Shintoism and so on. Basically, so can... all the main protagonists in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I don't know what does he do, but this is disgusting. Okay, and let's see what early controversial. Uh, he became obsessed with biblical prophecies, as if he can read English, right? And um, okay, okay, and some Buddhist scriptures. I don't know this guy is insane and obsessed. Yeah, he used Christian and Buddhist ideas to impress and educate Japanese people. 
Because most Japanese people are quite atheist, actually. Yeah, they're not that religious. So, um, okay, so I'm just going to go through really, really fast. And that's when he started the stupid subway attack that killed everyone because he has a mental illness. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh. so that's the end of the story. And I that's don't understand. Rundown. Yeah, I don't understand how people believe this crack, this crack. You know, in modern times, it's going to be just kicked out and put in a mental institution, seriously. Well, brainwashing is very strong, isn't it? People who are. It is, it is. People who are vulnerable, or people who will, the people who want to take advantage of vulnerable people will always find a way to do it, yeah, unfortunately. Pretty easy to rest. And a lot of people don't have a sense of belonging. So if somebody comes along and says, like, we're your family now, I get that. Like, if I was on my own, I didn't have anyone, and somebody wanted to be my family, I'd be like, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. Yeah, and you know what's the best part? Once I went to a fucking fortune teller, and she said, she looked at my birth date, and she said, sales is not suitable for an element. You shouldn't do a sales job. And the following year, I ended up in a sales job, and it's like, three and a half years now, it's going to be the fourth year in June. And I got a few MVP titles and all, like I did well in the sales and everything. So, you know, if I were to bring my MVP titles back to that stupid fortune telling place, which I don't want to, it's hot and smelly there and I'm lazy to go there and there's so many people. Yeah. So I think she's going to just kick me out <laughs> or put a curse on me. I'm like, yo, your <laughs> shit is wrong. Yo, you said it's not suitable for my element, right? I give you my birth date. Like, how the fuck do you even know me, bro? You just look at my birth date and calculate some numerical shit. But, you know, I've asked people who work with me for two or three years, right? Which one am I? Because I did a bit of admin, and they say I suck as an admin. They had to double check all my work, which I really do. Sometimes I even put the wrong gender for the candidates. I don't know why the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm in a rush and everything. So, luckily, they hired me. Why are you in a rush? Why are you in a rush? Yeah, in a rush? Me with some of the profiles. When so I'm I've got a question for you, Tan. The uh, fortune teller didn't tell you about your titty future. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, then I told like titty man, hey, I'm so sorry. Actually, this candidate is a male. That's what I want to know. Did, yeah, it, like, did it tell you about your titty future? Titty, 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 titty. Did it tell me anything about my titty future? That's why. Like, and she just said, you should do customer service for admin. But you know, I got fired from a customer service role twice. Once in the UK and in Singapore. So... <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> you know what's the matter? The people who work with me for two or three years say you're much better in sales. So who do you trust? A fucker on the road who just calculates bullshit on your birth date or people who have worked with you for two to three years? If I go and tell this to her, right, I'm certain I'll be kicked out of the store or she'll put a curse on me. So I'm like, and it's really hot and smelly there. It was not like, hey, I don't want to go. It's a waste of my time. People yeah. can only put a curse on you if you believe in curses. That's much I know about voodoo and things like that. So I bet if I put the word titty fortune teller into Google, I would find somebody. With a tits, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Fortune teller into tits. Yeah, I think it's going to be lady tits that you're going to see if you put titty fortune teller into Google. Yeah, I can see oh, yeah. myself hey, you know, in trouble with a buy from that one. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. You know what's the best part? She said, never wear black. It's a bad luck. Color of bad luck, unlucky color. I'm like, yo, are you just being, yeah? She say wear pink, wear gold, wear red. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, she said wear red or pink to the interview. Um, you know, if you go into a full corporate interview with a pink, with a you know a pink suit that looks like this, or a red suit, of course it's very unprofessional, right? People wear blue, black, or grey, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, dark colours. Yeah, exactly, for a corporate interview, yeah. Especially if you shit yourself and they can't see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Wrong time. Yeah. They can yeah. smell it, maybe. Yeah. And they can't yeah. touch you. Yeah, yeah I've been in the industry for four years, this HR industry for four years. And you know what she said to me? She said, oh, how did you survive the HR industry during COVID? And I'm like, I don't know, I got lucky. People are still looking for jobs, I mean, be it F&B, e-commerce or what, right? And she said, oh, because you're still lucky, but your luck will run out. You know, middle finger. <laughs> yeah. Fortune tellers always just tell me that I'm never going to be rich. 
Oh, um, the next my my pick is called Hometown. Hometown, thank you. I was yeah, like, I couldn't catch it and I wanted you to talk, so I don't want to be oh. awkward. And I said it at the beginning, actually. Uh, hello, what was yeah, your I know, but you talk fast sometimes, so no, I know. Okay, okay, okay. That's not uh, a bad thing. Please don't think that's an attack. Hometown. Okay. So, Helen, what was your question again? I was going to say, no, fortune tellers just always tell me that I'm never going to be rich, so I don't believe in them. Don't believe in them. It's your, your own. <laughs> yeah. Depends on what they mean by rich. Well, no, financially rich, yeah. She said, oh, there's this thing. I don't there's believe this... it. I, I mean, I've got suspicions. Um, uh, someone I know recently, I'm not going to name them, has yeah. been put on Instagram. Oh, I gave this person £500. They gave me five grand back. I'm very suspicious of that. Oh, God, yeah, no, don't do that. What, yeah. what, where do you think, how do you think they get the money? I think it's stolen. I don't trust it. It's been thought, though. <laughs> no, some people have these things where they all pay, like they get 100 people to pay in. A certain amount of money, and then they everybody wins every yeah, like a pot, like a pot, like a pot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I know people that do things like that in their workplaces, like they all pay in a hundred pound a month, and then every 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 year, once a year, they get that money back. But yeah. I don't know why they just don't put a hundred pound in their in their savings account and do it that way. So it's bullshit. So it might be criminal activity. Well, yeah. Yeah, and because actually some Asians are still stupid, unfortunately. They go to fortune tellers because they can't make their own life decisions. So I deem these people as stupid Asians. Okay. Yeah, people, I'm calling you out. Those Orientals who still go, you're stupid. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's okay. Yeah. Oh, next up is things that only Tara can say. For reading and <laughs> consultation, which is fucking stupid, based on the birthday, which is fucking stupid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know what all the fortune teller tells you? You just listen, you just listen. And you know, you're being stupid. You're making your life being controlled by somebody else. You have the freedom to make your own decisions. You are a woman. I'm doing your fortune teller for you. And you all do a podcast. <laughs> and Titty Man. Also, Titty yeah. Man. You'll be the Titty Witch. <laughs> Um, so, the person that I know listens to this podcast that knows that I'm shooting at them, I'm not going to name you, sort your fuck, sort, sort that shit out. Done. There we go. That's a slap of the scenes, isn't it? Well, I'm not naming them because they know that I'm onto them. So I just don't think it's cool. I think it's bad. I don't think it's going to work out well for them. There's no such thing as free money. No, it's criminal. I, I've got to say it. And you can't win a competition that you didn't enter. Those are my, like... Yeah. I mean, if someone is really psychic, they can predict... Co- they could have predicted COVID and this and that. Well, there, there's this guy called Lenoxie Darmus that everyone seems to think, but he predicts everything, and it's bullshit. He just said loads of random shit, and you could make it fit anything. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you can, you can predict the stock market. <laughs> Hey, there's Everything things in this life that you're never going to be able to predict. You never know. You never yeah. know. The stock market, the horse race winning. You know, you'll everything. be living in a penthouse. The luxury penthouse of a oh, freaking mansion. Not on the dirty side of the road telling lies. Um, about- I think, I believe that some people do have true intuition. But those yeah, people... Some people yeah. yeah. Those people don't make money from it. The people that have true intuition will... Yes. Yes, will you, money, yeah. Would not... Yeah. Cheapen yeah. their gift by charging people for it. Yeah, I, I believe that as well. I believe that. Yeah, yeah. True. I'm a Christian myself. I believe them. I, yes, I believe because I've, 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 met, powers, people I've met people, and I've and I've and I've had some experiences that you know can't be explained any other way, and that's mm. yeah, it can't be explained. Yeah, it can't be explained. Simple as that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't believe. You know, I th- I don't think anybody who truly has a gift will be making money from it. For real. So you do, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else is a charlatan, like you, you know, Derek Cora, come for me. The ghost of Derek Cora can come for me. Yeah. Oh, is, is anybody here lost someone? Well, uh, uh, you've come to see a psychic, so I'm guessing you're trying to contact the Great Beyond. Like, it's not I mean, you've been being yeah. I've lost someone at some point. Oh my god, I'm like, trying. Oh. Uh, not real though, those kind of things, yeah. I'm getting through a man who's lost his wife. Oh, that was my husband. Yeah, those people. Hey, hey, has any of you seen Nightmare Alley? No, I haven't. No. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> quite... too much. 
That's quite <laughs> new, think, isn't it? Isn't that yeah, the Del Toro Bradley film? Cooper. Yeah. When I it, that. It, it has elements of what you just said there, Helen. It has elements of that in there. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not gonna say too much because it's a it's a good movie. You gotta check it out. I'm gonna watch it. It's one of the things that I need to watch on my own because really good. Oh my goodness, really good. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna do my pick now then. I've got some breaking news. Okay, yeah. Let's go. I've got some breaking news. What's that? We've just cracked 14k subscribers, yo. Ooh, that's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations to us. Yeah. 14,000 downloads, 100 followers. We are doing good on Spotify. Thank you all for your support. Excellent. Well, I've also got 115 followers on, on my Instagram account. Now, that's not important. Helen, please. <laughs> Have you got 115,000 on your Instagram account? 115. That is every person is about is is a treasure to me right now. Mm. Excellent. Okay, so first pick is going to be uh, a Disney Plus pick, and that's going to be the new Pixar film Seeing Red. It's so good, guys. Technically, it's a film, but we let it go. Yeah, but it's on telly, so you know I'm having it. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to bend the rules. It's really we good. Talk about it now so that it's a future house of animation project, lads. And that's all right, then. Well, I'll keep, I'll just say it's good and you should watch it. And then I'm going to go on to something else. I've got other things to pick. I've got other things. Can I ask a question? The red panda is it actually representative of the girl being a teenager and it's a period boom? Yeah, to some degree, yeah, but not completely. Like, why well, does that you... be red though? Blood panda because pandas, red pandas are red. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's blood. It's like, yo, I'm just now a blood. Mm, it's a bit more complicated than that. It's a bit more subtle than that as well. Okay. It's like, it's about her, like, not being able to, you know, getting a bit older and starting to feel things and not being able to contain her emotions. And then when the emotions build up inside her and get too big, she turns into a red panda. Sounds like a normal teenager. But then, you know, if you're a teenage girl, then you're going to think, oh, that's what it's like trying to keep hold of your hormones. But if you're a ten-year-old boy watching it, you'd be going, "Oh, isn't that cute?" She turns into a panda. You know, it's 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 not explicitly for teenage girls, but it's it's really good. And I think you know, if you do understand it and you do understand it on that level, then it's really lovely. But I don't think you need to un- be able to understand that to enjoy it. But it's just really nice. It looks amazing. Uh, the makers of it obviously really love anime and really love the whole manga thing because there's a lot of kind of properly manga inspired sequences uh very like kind of scott pilgrim in vibe and style it's just a really nice watch is it pixar yeah it's pixar lovely okay so i'm not going to say much more than that because obviously it might be a future house of animation episode but it's on telly and i watched it and i liked it you should come on for that episode so that we can spoil the shit out of it um the other thing I watched on Netflix was Pieces of Her mm-hmm. okay. with Tony Collette. Is this where someone gets like um, chopped up and then pieces of her get delivered to the boyfriend? Or... <laughs> no, the no, no, no. So it's the first episode is like Tony Collette's this suburban mom and her daughter's kind of struggling about where she is with her career, doesn't quite know what she wants to do. They live on this island in Southern America, in Georgia. And then all of a sudden, uh, they're having breakfast at a cafe. Daughter's just finished her night shift as a 911 operator. Mm-hmm. And a guy bursts into the diner and starts shooting. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, this quiet, suburban, meek mom turns into this absolute, like, badass staring the guy down, getting the gun off of him. And then from that point, everything just starts to unravel. Um, the mum's like saying to the daughter, you've got to get away, it's not safe for you anymore. And then like, it just sets off a chain of events about how they got to that point. And um, yeah, it's a really interesting watch. I'm not, as I said, it's got big, like, I'm not going to spoil it because it's got, plot, you know, Obviously, there's more to Tony Collette's character than meets the eye, and there's you know that we find out more about that as the episodes go on. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a really good 
nice little thriller. The following, mainly following Tony Collette's daughter, she's kind of trying to piece together why her mum sent her off on the run. That's a question. Go on. Tony Collette, she seems to play really unhappy women since hereditary. Is she happiness or is she still miserable? Um, she plays a really, <laughs> she's lovely on the red carpet. You see her in an interview, she's really popular. Yeah, she's a nice person, she's a nice person, but like she plays miserable characters and stuff. She's really good at it. Like that screaming hereditary where the, the uh turn happens halfway through, yeah, a certain thing in a post, right? The howling and that is like the, one of the most amazing things I've ever heard from an actor, yeah, it sounds like a real thing. Is she, is she on top form here? It's 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 not screaming Tony Collette, it's quiet complexity Tony Collette. So that kind of she's a great actor. Yeah, you know that there's lots going on under the surface that you can't really see, but it's she's very subtle. yeah, very subtle Tony Collette. Yeah, mm. it's not like Knives Out Tony Collette or Muriel's Wedding Tony Collette. It's like <laughs> quiet quiet dignity Tony Collette. Okay, all right, okay, so, yeah. And then my other, I'm going to do another one because I can. Um, I've you watching, definitely can, yeah. I've watched most of it today and it is The After Party on Apple TV+. Plus. Okay. The After Party. Has any, any of you guys heard of it? No. Oh. Well, so. After this podcast so, ends. It's a bit of an ensemble piece. Um, so we've got uh, Ben Schwartzman. Or ben, is it Ben Schwartzman or Ben Schwartz? Uh, John Ralphio, basically. Um, Ileana Glazer, uh, Jamie Dimitriou, Tiffany Haddish, lots of like really big names. Okay. Uh, Dave Franco. Are at they're all they're all at the school reunion, and um, one of their classmates is a pop star now. Yeah. And they're all at the school reunion, and uh, the guy, the pop star friend, played by Dave Franco, ends up dead. Hold on, Dave Franco, like it rhymes like James Franco, so it'd be like Barry Osborne. <laughs> Harry Osborne, <laughs> Barry Osborne, shall I leave? Dave Franco is James Franco's brother. Brother, I know that's where the joke comes from. Barry <laughs> Osborne. Oh, um, I get it. Sorry, I was like, what's going on? Go for it. Just so, I'm sorry. I thought it was a cheap fan, so I'm just gonna I leave. got I got it. But it's a bit it's a bit late it's a bit late in the day for me on a Friday. So oh. I have no idea what's going on, everyone. <laughs> just go ahead, Ellen, go ahead. <laughs> I've muted myself. Don't it's mute me. yourself. So yeah, Dave Franco. Turns up dead at the after party, and then Tiffany Haddish is playing the detective who is trying to piece together the evening. And each episode is a very different. So each episode is told the same story is told from a different character's perspective. Yeah. And each episode has a different style. Oh, okay. So the first episode's like a romantic comedy. It's all very much like missed glances and all that, and then. Depending on the character who's playing, like the main character, that's how the how the story goes. So, the first episode is about a guy kind of re- trying to reconnect with his long lost love at this school reunion. So it's like romantic comedy. The second episode is like an action. Like the guy's trying to he's been a bit of a shit, so he's trying to paint himself as a hero. So it's all like action movie and like too fast too furious kind of stuff and then there's, a, there's another episode that's like um like a, like a gritty thriller yeah. and then one that's like a high school comedy they go back in time to look at how they you know how they all knew each other so that one's a bit more like high school like american pie kind of thing oh, it's okay. just it's just and one episode the musical episode sorry so oh, yeah just cool. really really fun lots of actors having a lot of fun and enjoying themselves and it's nice to see jamie dimitriou who's a British actor doing something, doing really well in something American. It's like, yeah, get you get that national recon, international recognition, mate. You go for it. You go for it, mate. Go, yeah. for it, girl. You go, girl. Yeah, you go, man. Go, you know, your sister's, your sister's doing it in what we do in the shadows. You go and do it in the after party. Oh, sorry, his sister's having sex in the shadows. No, his sister. 
No. It's another crap pun. Ignore me. <laughs> Bang. Sometimes you just got to give me that one little moment I'm in. I'm in oh there. My God. Like his sister in the shadows. I'm in there quickly. You're very good. Yes, Thank that you. was an excellent pun. So yeah, that's my pick. Go no, that's why I'm here. Check out the after party. It's very good. That's what they called it in the shadows, yeah, the after party. But um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. Oh, can't take me anywhere. Um, so thank you very much. We were meant to, yeah, I'm 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 feeling a bit I'm feeling a bit prickly today. Like I feel like I've got to make as many dumb jokes as possible. Um, so um, I okay, we're gonna wrap this bad boy up. So I'm gonna start with House of Animation is back up and running. We all this week have just dropped Beauty and the Beast, and we discussed why Beast locking up a woman to make sure that she and she can't leave until she loves him is problematic. We talk about that, and next week we talk about why Woody and Buzz is the most unofficial gay duo ever. And they should just love each other. And both Hang on, be- can we? If we're gonna like be having a go at Beast for locking women in his house, can we have a go at the witch who turned a ten-year-old boy into a beast because he didn't let him in because he was literally ten when that happened? So you, I think you need to that. take that into account. Shit, we missed that bit. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, we, we, heaven, yes. But we have we have pointed out that Lumio is a very smooth player, and he's most probably had sex with everyone in the castle before they all got churned into kitchen ornaments. So there's that. So please listen to that episode. We it comes off the rails. It's one of the most amazing things we've ever spoken about. Like we it's go insane. into places and a Toy Story where Bo Peep is a um, a cop blocker and. Um, Basically, he was never interested in Woody in Toy Story 4. And Jesse's annoying. So, really, Buzz and Woody are just putting up with it because they love each other. That's next week's episode. Check that out. Toy Story 2. It's going to be fun. Exciting. Um, yeah, lovely. We we talk about sex somehow in that podcast. And, and I do, but it's happy. Yeah, we, we don't know how. Every week it comes roaring down to fan fiction. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes. So, Helen, where can they find us? Uh, at Square Eisen on at twitter.com and Square Eisen at gmail.com. Lovely. Okay. Yes. Troy, where's your shit? Yes. Legend of All 101. Pop culture, reviews, reactions, all that good stuff. And yes, Warrior Season 2 is coming on my channel too. <laughs> That's going to be glorious. Right. Lovely. And he also likes muscles. You might get an Arnold Classic when you're not expecting it. Oh, it was amazing. Tara, and, and Tara Chloe, what would you like to pimp? Oh, I like to pimp my channel featuring Asian titty men, especially the one called Wonho. Unbelievably, he's one year younger than me. I don't know how. Yeah, just so check out my channel. You have a lot of K-pop content and stuff. And soon, travel vlogs when the borders open. You're like an 18-year-old. So you look quite young, so it's not like, yeah. Thank you. I, I thank this Korean cream called Su Wa Su. I should actually promote it really heavily. It's an anti- Su. It's a La Su. Su Wa Su. It means uh, snow flower, I believe. Mm. That's a nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a ginseng extract anti-aging cream. It looks pretty, it works pretty mm. well. Yep. Okay. Lovely. You will always permanently be ID'd in any bar in the UK. Congratulations. Wait, I don't get ID'd. I hate here, you for that. No, I'm joking. I though. never get ID'd here. Because in Singapore, we are required to show ID. In the UK, house. you're going to get ID'd every five seconds. Like, you're t- yeah. you're guaranteed. Like, guaranteed. Like, no way do you not get ID'd. Seriously, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's <laughs> sickening. Sickening, woman. No, I'm joking. Because we're here, we have to show our ID, but it doesn't happen to me. Yeah, here, so yeah, you will in the UK because they will stop you every five seconds. You're gonna hate it, so yeah, yeah, just once. But I don't know, I was much younger than that, I was like 21 that time, so yeah, nine, ten, nine years younger, yeah, yeah. But you're still the youngest member of this podcast, so I can't really sympathize with that, unfortunately. So <laughs> See, I'm gonna be 13 in two weeks' time, so yeah, but oh, you're still the youngest member of this podcast, summer child. Kids. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so yeah. 
sweet you're, time. It's my you're birthday. You're ranking members here. You're still in nappies, love. Okay, we're done. Right, okay. So, right. you're the baby. Don't worry about it. You're a mature baby. You're a mature baby. So, we have a Facebook group. Go see it. It will update you when we're, we're live. All that stuff. Go cause chaos in there. No penis pictures, please. <laughs> no, please. I don't want to keep deleting that shit. Please. please sort it out. I can't think of anything else. I think that's it. The other it. stuff is in there. Just Alex the... Torlo's, uh therapy website is in there. Go check it out. She's very good at keeping people calm. She's good to talk to. I'm working under her, so she's going to help me out in my new role. So she's great. Give me your money. She won't yeah. listen to this. Maybe she does, but hey, I covered my ass. No, she's legit. Good. <laughs> good. 100, episode 102 is in the bag. Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry Titmus. Tara Chloe is in the bag. It's the episode title. It's lovely. It's done. It's goodbye for me. Goodbye for me. Goodbye from me too. Bye from me. You gotta call me sir. <laughs>